Well, shall we uh, get into uh, some little Tevin's Coleman? You want to go Tevin Coleman? Let's go Tevin Coleman. Yeah, we got to go Tevin. Tevin's Coleman. Well, the 49ers do not give a shit about your fantasy football team. Ah, it's a bummer. It's a now, bummer. Unless they cut M- McKinnon. I was then, about to say, then, with that being said, there is still a chance that Jarek McKinnon gets cut. No, there's not. I mean, there is. They, they, they could save themselves some money down the line by Who cutting Jarek McKinnon. Who needs the money? The boys are trying to win some ball they games. Got, they do have a decent amount of cap, but as things go, cap will keep going up, and maybe they find themselves in a cap strap situation further down the line. But nah. Most likely not. The cap continues to go up and prices keep going up and they seem to not be paying running backs. So right now they basically have two running backs. They don't even equal one of the elite running backs. So hell, why not keep them both is what you want to do. That's what you want to run the football. And by the end of last year, you were playing Kyle Wilson or what was his name? Jeff Jeffrey. Wilson. Jeffrey. Jeffrey Wilson. Like you, you were past Mostert. You reached it. You, they even gave Mostert some money. They were like, here, bub, take some money. Don't go anywhere. Yeah, I you need you. Didn't do bad. So you guys are really cheap right now. We're going to take all the yeah. running backs. So maybe maybe McKinnon does end up getting cut. We don't know how that's going to go. But as of right now, I'm firmly in the camp of why not just keep them all? Like, this is what you want to do. This is what you're successful at. This is what you do well. You can put Tevin Coleman and McKinnon and or Brita all out on the field. Maybe not all three of them, but two of these guys out on the field at once and, and do all sorts of different things. Tevin Coleman was your guy way back when you were in Atlanta and McKinnon was the guy you brought in last year and just didn't work out for you because of an injury. But both have different skill sets and, and can do different things. And you don't need any one of them to shoulder a huge workload. If you have these three guys who can clearly get it done, Breida look like a stud. Mostert look like a stud. Hell, Jeffrey looked like a stud for a minute there. I mean, everyone was looking good. Everyone looks like a stud. It's like the Oprah Winfrey show for running backs over there. <laughs> Yeah. You, you look get, like a stud. You look like a stud. You break a big run. Yeah. You break a big run. Right. So, I mean, it's what they want to do. It's how they want to do things. It's what Kyle does. Kyle does a good job over there running the football. And good for them. But, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't bode well for your fantasy team. I was, you, you'd be excited for McKinnon if he ended up being the only guy there. And you would end, be really excited for Tevin Coleman if he ended up being the only guy there. But chances are it's probably not going to happen. So... Let's get into the reality of kind of what's going on in San Francisco value wise for any of these running backs. Obviously, Breida, lowest man on the totem pole right now. So any of those Breida's old owners, I was kind of urging you to sell throughout the year if, if he wasn't it gearing was, you up for a stretch run. It was so hard to sell Breida for what he was actually right. worth because he was leaving every game with an injury so he always made you feel bad but right. he'd come back and play next week with a questionable and, tag and usually perform and he'd pretty look well great doing it and then he'd limp off again uh, like we were i was really heavy on the cell brita if you could find the window last mm-hmm. year because he was always limping off but whenever he was on the field he was doing work um like you said i mean you know what they want to do and you just mentioned the ridiculousness of running back names that they had to go through last year. They got three games out of Jimmy G. Well, t- three technically, but two good, two real games. And then he got hurt in the third game. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so we're back into the backup train and then Nick Mullins made his debut on a Monday night. And that was kind of the situation for the quarterbacks. But you talk about what the team, you know, uh, Marquise Goodwin, uh, didn't live up to expectations. Had, had some injuries had and some then had injuries. some personal things going on. That Pierre were, Garçon. Would, would, would rattle any man. Other Exactly. Outside of Kittle, basically the entire offense. Garçon injured. Uh, exactly. Outside of Kittle, the entire Trent offense. Trent Taylor still coming off a of back surgery. Dante Pettis a little nicked up. Nicked up and a an, and an freshy, like yeah. new guy. New silly guy. Hair. Say it's nicked up. Finished the season strong. Kittle played awesome. Um, but just let me just hit on something real quick. Talk about how the offense is just as bad as it. Two years in a row, the, the, the 49ers just having terrible luck with injuries and losing close games and like somehow, some way, getting guys to come out ex- inspired each every week after you're, you know, three and five, but you lost in overtime two weeks in a row and those types of things, you know, just – Playing good enough to almost win will run the fun in that runs out fast. Right. But somehow the 49ers as an organization carry that along in the last two years longer than most teams could ever do that. Yeah. Keep keeping morale in a losing situation. Let me just run through what 
Mostert did last year in limited action. He only had like 30-something carries, but one game he had seven carries for 86 yards, a 52-yard long run. Another game he had two carries, only 18 yards, but, I mean, 18 yards on two carries, averaging nine a clip, 14-yard long run. Seven carries, 59 yards, 16-yard long run. Another game, 12, get 12 carries, 87 yards, 26-yard long run. Like, dude's explosive, but it's – with nothing going, you're in a backup quarterback situation. You got backup receivers everywhere. You got backup running backs everywhere. And still, the defense knows you're going to run it, and they're having success do it. Like you said, they paid Mostert to come back around just because he showed the explosiveness. And then Wilson looked good at the end of the year. He had more run because Mostert came out there and broke his arm when then basically he became the starter for that one week that Breida actually took off. Mm-hmm. But, but you know, and Breda averaged five point three a carry for the season. Right. Well, so, it's, and yeah, is is most certain, basically everybody is, that touched the ball was really good is running Mostert, it. Is Mostert that explosive and that great of a running back? Probably not. The system's really good. That's what like, I'm saying. What but, they're what they're doing out and the offensive line isn't like this awesome offensive line. Like what they're doing and how they're doing it and the system that they're running is good for getting running backs into a spot. And and yes, you have to have a certain level of. Uh, explosiveness i guess but i mean when you're when mostert and wilson or is that what his name was wilson were, were doing their thing like i mean that's telling you everything you need to know about what they're doing over there in well, san francisco and, and i and the reason i wanted to run through that it's not that i'm saying Mostert's the best running back ever it's just how many times do you see and we like the jets for instance we ju- I just read off the jets to sit team statistics for rushing the ball last year and they were at the bottom of every category on the free show oh, okay well on the free, yeah but attempts middle of the league production bottom of the league you know and this this game this team right here had the exact same prop worst problems in the jets last year offensively as far as like your stud quarterback didn't get hurt the jets well, the jets didn't for a little bit he did well in and out but he yeah. didn't blow his knee out and yeah. the, the season was lost you know and just everybody still robbie performed. anderson was still around it was it was a all your running backs were healthy that's what i'm saying that's what yeah but, but like all right so on a big sample size, Breida averaged five point three a carry with the entire nobody on the offense was scaring you. Basically, yeah, limped other, off six times a game. Yeah, other than yeah, always hurt. Still got five point three a carry. It and, might be an over actor, maybe, maybe, maybe a little dramatic, but uh, maybe he's just tough as nails, and he should have never limped back in to begin well, with. Well, yeah, half of the game it's like, well, just quit coming back in, right? But, and the only person that really didn't do what we wanted him to do was Alfred Morris, given this situation. We thought Alfred Morris, after McKinnon got hurt in the free agent, I mean, in the preseason, they signed Alfred Morris. He looked good in the preseason and came in didn't and, just, re- and, and, and really didn't even get a ton of run necessarily, you know? No, average about 10 carries a game over 12 games. He, yeah. he got a couple of opportunities and he just didn't show the explosiveness and it was gone. Mm-hmm. And basically they put in somebody else that you know started showing it from other guys but basically i just i wanted to run through that because in how many times you see a team that's losing and has limited weapons be able to actually run the ball productively right it just doesn't happen when you're losing and there's no threat of anything going on downfield like it's not even like kittle wasn't catching long passes he was taking like slants to the house yeah. from 70 yards away because he's a beast and the quarterback hit him in stride once or twice a game. You know, it's not mm-hmm. like they were proficiently throwing the ball down the right. field. But they they also do run a lot of they're, they're at the top end of 12 personnel, 13 person like the, the 21 and, and oh, they got tight person. ends they're, on the field. They're they're at the, the upper echelon of that. So they they are creating that situation where they can put that tight end especially now they have an uber athletic guy right, right in that situation to to excel because he's been doing this and they have a bunch of other tight ends on the field it's ridiculous when you look at the percentages of what other teams are doing like the patriots are like the only other team using tight ends like as much as the 49ers are and 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 what they're doing it's really interesting to look at the personnel groupings in sure. 12 and 21 well basically you get into that to say all right Obviously, they we don't know if they're keeping McKinnon, but he's you know he got hurt early enough last year. You would imagine he's coming back full force this year. Mm-hmm. Maybe the old he's not strong, he's not hundred percent till the next year. But I these, mean, the, these uh, days that'd be the summer, right? The, these day, <laughs> these days, these days, right? Well, these days the ACLs can they can be fixed in eight months. Yeah, so he should be good to go if he's on the team. Great, but the Tevin Coleman addition, like, look what they were able to do with wheels falling off of everybody right. you know That's the entire the, the, the wheels the wheels fell off the season when jimmy g went down and then i mean mckinnon got hurt before they played a game 
You know, so it's just like, oh, here we go again. Okay, well, we still got Jimmy G. We didn't have McKinnon last year anyway, so let's see what we could do. Boom, Jimmy G blows his knee out on the sideline game three, and they're still just so productive. Right. So you bring in Tevin Coleman to me. Yep. I mean, we joked about this last year. It's like, well, maybe Tevin Coleman goes to the 49ers, right. you know, and it's just like. That was Shanahan's guy. I mean, what? I, I, we were excited about McKinnon last year because just for this reason, like if you're going to be the guy in San Francisco, then I want you like I want the guy who's going to be the guy. in San Francisco. I don't give a shit if he hasn't had enough carries to be the this workhorse guy and hasn't shown this or that. Like if the 49ers are going to put you in and they're going to put you in at running back, I want that player. That player is going to score fantasy points. 100 percent. Now we have a little bit of a situation where, you know, I like Jarek McKinnon just fine. I I don't I don't love Jarek McKinnon like a lot of other people, but when you put him in that situation, I was in. And now you have Tevin Coleman, who's just a guy I do kind of like. Yeah. Uh, but now you, you're probably going to be in a middled situation with both if they do keep both. But it's kind of been the same situation that Tevin Coleman's been in the entire time he's been yeah, a player. And, 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 when, and when he year, was with Kyle Shanahan, it was a good time. It wasn't exactly. terrible. And and last year he ended. It was a great time. I mean, it was an okay time. It wasn't great. Well, I mean, he I, was the number two. Like right. I, he was behind a, De, a Devonte Freeman who had just broke out. And, and I would I would say that McKinnon's not as good as Freeman is. So. Uh, exactly. That's so I think. But I mean, it still wasn't like great. I think well, I, I think Tevin Coleman shapes I'm, up to be one A instead of one B. What I'm getting at is is like. No, do I think am I am I getting anywhere near the the second or third round? Like if Tevin it's a Coleman, because the shackles aren't going to come off. If you Tevin know? Coleman like he's been under this, sure, yeah, right. And number if, two, if Tevin Coleman was just going to be the guy, it'd be he. I'd be like third round ADP all day long with with this guy. Give me that guy. Like yeah, I don't care if you are a Tevin Coleman believer or not, but I think he's plenty athletic. He was a hand picked guy by Kyle Shanahan when he came in there. He was going to be the starter over Devontae Freeman. Got hurt came in there and still produced really well with Kyle Shanahan. But in 18, for as bad as it was, he still had 12.1 PPR points a game on a decimated offensive line for the uh, Falcons. Falcons over there and an offense that didn't necessarily produce running the ball wise and they were trying to figure out a a whole bunch of different things they were passing the ball really well the falcons were the bottom of the league in rushing attempts but i mean still had 12.1 yards and and points per game and 181 total uh points so yes jay only had 167 attempts right i was gonna say well they didn't have freeman for most of that time but they didn't really give him the ball a lot no and they they were still splitting it's not like they were just like oh here's 20 carries for tevin coleman now all of a sudden and even so their their offensive line was legitimately just marred with injuries he had nine touchdowns still though right that's he had 12.1 points per game like it's not the worst ever and and everybody just you know and if maybe he stays around the 12, 13, 14 points a game being even if he is 1A in San Francisco and they still are they are using two three backs is that the best situation ever no not really but that's a really decent usable asset like if you can tell me that Tevin Coleman can get me 11 to 14 points every time I plug him into my uh lineup and he's currently at 78 ADP down from 79 in December I'm in yeah like, well uh I said the Falcons ran it the least. The Packers ran it the least, the least for sure. But of uh, the Falcons were in the like bottom three of the league in attempts. And first of all, there's no Matt Ryan. I mean, Jimmy G is Jimmy G, and he before the injury, at the end of the 17 season, Jimmy G was the best thing ever. But there's no Julio Jones right. in San Fran. There's there's maybe there's a Calvin Ridley. Maybe Dante Pettis takes the step forward that we think he should and maybe could and probably will. We hope. Uh, there's, but there's not that offense to take away from the running backs that there was that there was in Atlanta, and like you said, the offensive line kind of fell off, had a huge, huge step back from what we were used to see in the last two or two years previous for Atlanta, um, and 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 then additionally, I, the even at this point, there's not. I mean, they they the. the, the 49ers could go hard in the paint for a rookie wide receiver, but you're not bringing in anybody right now at this point. You you basically because Antonio Brown's gone and Tyrell Williams was never going to be a huge number one for anybody. There's nobody really out there that you're going to bring in that's going to say, okay, well this is our 150 targets per year type guy. Even if McKinnon stays and Tevin Coleman are, are on the field. Obviously, you got Breida. So if the three of those guys and Shanahan's already said we might we might have four running backs active every game day because we're going to have to use them. I don't see outside of Kittle anybody that necessarily 
and they want Pettis to take a step forward. And Marquise Goodwin is is a speedster that really had a connection with Jimmy G two years ago at the end of the season. I don't see anybody that's necessarily saying, "Hey, I'm taking a third of the team's production just because that's who I am." There's no Julio Jones on this team, so like even if it is split up between some running backs, I think the piece the pie for the running backs is bigger for the 49ers than most teams. And probably, right. I, right. I bet their running back pie at the end of the year is going to be top five. And, mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of like the Saints. Like, com- combined, their running backs are going to do this at the end of the year. And it's like the Patriots. You don't know who's going to get it, but you know their running backs are – they're always in the top five of rushing attempts because they can get first downs and they stay on the field and they've always been top five and maybe top two in the league and rushes inside the top five-yard line because the Patriots get there. Well, the 49ers have had a real problem getting there and necessarily converting in the red zone and stuff because of all the problems they've had in the last two years, but they haven't really had a problem going down the field and getting first downs just because of the X's and O's. Is it like a supreme level over there? So I, I feel like the, the piece of the pie for the running backs, even though the pie is going to be cut up a couple extra times, there's a lot of pie to go around. Sure. You got anything over there, Jay Wayne? Well, I mean, who? let's look at let's look at his ADP at 78. It's, it's as low as it's been in... I think three years, it's probably going to go up, I guess, a little from I there. I mean, if, because if he's McKinnon a gets cut, it'll, it'll, it'll well, certainly McKinnon fly gets up. cut, but, geez. Right? I still, but, don't, I still don't, like, they don't, the Niners don't care about your fantasy team, but I still don't think it's, like, the worst ever. Like, at 75, yeah. That's what I'm saying. And you still, at this point, we're, a, we're, we're talking about these potential problems with what running backs getting fantasy points. We're assuming health here. Like, if, I don't think they've let go of McKinnon just because in the last two years, this has been one of exactly. the That's least lucky teams what I was with start, help. Started all this off with. So like, you, you, shit, they got bring, five different guys in there last exactly. year. Exactly. So you bring, this is what they want to do. You got, you're got you not paying anybody an elite salary. You got two guys who are pretty good, and I can get away with paying them each $5 million a year. Sure. We've, 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 we've had this conversation before uh, with different teams. You might not have the right one in your lineup in week one, week two, week three. McKinnon might crush one week. Coleman might break off a long one next week. Brita might be out there. Who knows? But if I would like, this is a, this is a, nothing's changed for me. It's the same argument I had last year. I want as many running backs for the Niners as I can get on my team. And if right now, if there's, if it's a muddy, if all of these running back before McK- if McKinnon gets cut before McKinnon, hates muddy. I love it when it gets muddy. He hates it muddy. Right situation. now, I love it. I love the mud because <laughs> let me get let me get as many of these guys as I can get right now while it's a little bit muddy. And yeah, obviously if I go, that's but, never been your stance. But, you hate but the mud, a, but not in the fort, not for the 49ers. Yeah. Not for it's, you, I get what you're saying. You got to love the the situation right now just for. The team, it's, obviously, that they're the all running back room healthy, is crowded. Well, that they're this, all there this whole healthy. coaching narrative that coaching even matters about yeah. well, positions is, is stupid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I mean, I get it. Like it, it's all it's all a little muddy, and and bef- if if anything happens, the value will, will shoot one way or the other. All right. So, well, sure. so before this Tevin Coleman signing, which I assume is the this ADP is before all this free agency stuff, Tevin Coleman and Jarrett McKinnon were back to back seventy eight seventy nine. I don't know how that's going to change now that McKinnon's still a 49er but has competition in the backfield. Who do you, who do you want more, Tevin Coleman or Jared McKinnon? Who are you? I mean, take? it's Tevin Coleman uh, all me, day long. Me, I, I like Tevin Coleman better as a running back. They just signed just him. In like, there's nobody's at, nobody's being like, well, Tevin Coleman might get cut. They just signed him. Right. McKinnon might get cut, and you don't go from the Niners' backfield to a better situation. You know, there's a. You there know, might be let's see, a couple of situations here, but nothing better. I mean, right. maybe. I mean, obviously, maybe maybe you might go to a situation after draft day that nobody drafted a running back, and there's not Tevin Coleman and Brita right there, you know, jumbling up stuff. But I just feel like, all right, right I, I think it's Tevin Coleman all day long. Tevin Coleman or Rashad Penny? Coleman. Bah. <laughs> that was real quick. We're just talking about Coleman, so I'm excited. <laughs> Casey and he's a niner. He's, yeah, I mean, uh, Casey's Casey couldn't be happier. He that Tevin oh, Coleman I'm, came I'm, to San I, Francisco. I could care less what the fantasy outlook really is. I just want the Niners to be good, right? I mean, Penny's probably the smarter move, but could be in a similar situation. Ag- agreed. Uh, Gee, let me think. <laughs> um, sure. 
Yeah. Ah, uh, sure. Get rid of Penny. I mean, I I could I could I'm flip, just kidding. I could flip a coin on that Penny versus Tevin Coleman. I I like I like Tevin. Mikey Coleman D's a bunch. out of there. Mike. Penny's uh, got the draft capital. That's, it's just it's it's one of two over there. But Chris right Carson's now. still there. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's Chris Carson or something. So saying he's he could, right there. It could be it could be a, a pretty similar situation in Seattle. Another team who was going to be in the top end of running the ball, and they mm-hmm. could be in a similar situation of they're maybe kind of in a split decision. And Penny's definitely got some some big play upside, but. I don't think that Tevin Coleman lacks big play upside. So. Oh no, he's got a big play upside. That's how he's made his career off of that. Well, he just had these he, points per game are based off of bigger plays. Well, he didn't do too much big play in last year. Yeah, but he still, still had the points. Nine touchdowns. Yeah. So, if you go back to 2006, receiving and rushing. If you go back to 2016, when it was him and for, uh, Freeman, and they were with Shanahan in Atlanta, mm. and I think that was the. Maybe the highest scoring offense in the league at that point. I mean, twenty sixteen, yeah. yeah, and super high efficient. So, some, that's what I'm saying. So like, tore it up. So Freeman's out there. Freeman got in 2016. Freeman got 227 carries, and I, this is all speculation, but we might. This is something to talk about. 227 carries, a thousand yards, eleven touchdowns, and had 54 catches. So that was like the one A of that offense. That year in 2016. Well, that's not speculation. That really happened, right? I mean, but I'm saying to, to transfer transfer over. Okay. over. Okay. Um, and Tevin Coleman that year was getting a whole lot less work. Um, played in looks like 13 games. He had 118 carries for 520 yards and 31 receptions. So I mean, still finished. Fantasy running back 19 and was averaging 14.7 yards a carry as as the Robin do a Batman in that situation. 14.7 uh, points, per, points game. per game. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, if, if that's where he ends up, like even even if he ends up at 14.7 points a game, like I'll, I'll take all my Tevin Coleman shares right to the bank. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's on like 118 carries. That's that's nothing. Well, that was on the best offense per play, sure. in the, and, and, and maybe but, in the history of the but, league. And they're, they're kind of saying, well, McKinnon's more of the Freeman than any. It's like, well, why, why can't we flip flop that around and Tevin Coleman be the one oh, A and Coleman's and, more of the Freeman, McKinnon's the Coleman. That's what. Like, why can't he be the guy with more carries? <laughs> yeah. I'm confused. And, what Coleman's you, a Freeman. <laughs> Coleman's a Freeman. Finkel, <laughs> McKinnon's Finkel a Coleman. Einhorn. Einhorn. Finkel. Finkel. Einhorn. For sure. <laughs> So I don't know what we solved, but then Breed is good too. So we're we're kind of screwed for a minute. Breed is good too, but I, like they don't. I I I just don't see him working too much. I think he'll be on the field somewhat. But oh, I he just, earned it, Bo. I don't. I don't. I, don't, I think with, if you good. have both of those other guys healthy, I think they'll be the mainstays of what's going on. Breed is good. Breed is not bad, but I think if Tevin Coleman and Breed is good and McKinnon are operating at at a high level, Breed He's is not, not going to see much of the field. <laughs> It's gonna be. I muddy. would agree. I don't think that all three are going to be healthy at the same time. So the 49ers are just hoping that two out of the right three ain't bad. You know, <laughs> exactly. What well, coincidence? Mid off season meet is semi fast approaching. <laughs> sure, this off season is flying by. All right. Well, so is every everyone in on. I mean, if Tevin Coleman's at seventy five oh. ADP, I think everyone's kind of in on that, right? All day. I don't need a running back at that point, but I'll take him. I'll take, yeah, so I'll take 14 to six times 12 is 72. So you're in the early seventh round. I could take Tevin Coleman as my seventh best player or seventh player picked and not necessarily count on him open a day for my RB one spot. I, taking I him mean, nobody's five that's, or not, six. Well, that's not what you're getting him for. That's what I'm saying. Obviously it would be nice to think of him that way, but I mean, he's, well, a, he's going to kind of fall back into a no little matter, bit of where he always was. And unless, unless you, any, no matter how you pick your team, you're going to be in the seventh round. You're picking flex players or you're picking your wide receiver one or two. If you are crazy with it the way I do, you might pick a, a ton of running backs and I might fill up my flex spots and with starter startable running backs and try to get as many RB ones and twos on my team. Like Tevin Coleman in the seventh round, I think that's solid. I mean, and especially maybe it's him that gets hurt, but I mean, if somebody else gets hurt in that backfield and the target and the, well, the snap share starts to, turn in one guy's favor over the other 
Starts that's turned right when that snap share turns. That's when magic happens. Mm-hmm. It, that's what I'm saying. Like it, I, it, so, I'm saying it might take it might take three weeks. It might take eight weeks, but one of them is going to be crushing. Get yourself a piece of the pie is basically what it is. Yeah, get that. Get that. And he's the biggest piece, I guess. Get a couple slices. All right. Well, that should that should cover it for Tevin Coleman. Let's go ahead and take a quick break. Let me let me throw something out real quick on Tevin Coleman. You better make it quick. It's got to be quick. Buy the burrito, because if McKinnon gets cut, then we're talking about this oh, situation. Bitch. I'm just saying. But 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 right now, Burrito's the odd man out supposedly. Yeah. So Burrito's Burrito's cheap, 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 cheap. Go get the cheap Burrito. If McKinnon leaves, Tevin Coleman gets hurt. Here we go. Here we go. Because in on muddy Burrito. I mean, I, I love I, muddy cheap they, Burrito. If you are doing startups and they and they end up well, even if they end up keeping all of those guys and you're doing startups late, like there's no reason to not put Brita on your team. Agreed. That's all I'm saying. Sure. Cheap Brita. Agreed. All right. For real, we're going to break.